and we're back. This is the Red Press. I'm Mark McGill. This is being recorded on Sunday evening, just a few hours after Liverpool's one all draw with Manchester City in an exhilarating game at Anfield. And I'm fortunate enough to be joined tonight with a guest from Las, Vi- Las Vegas, Nevada, a lot sunnier than Liverpool is right now on this rainy Sunday evening. And I'm being joined by Roman from the Unconformed YouTube channel. That's a really good Reds YouTube channel where I was drawn to this channel because Roman does really um, good analysis of Liverpool games, but he does it in a really relaxed kind of, you know, it's a really laid back approach. It's really good, but I'm guessing that you win as relaxed and laid back <laughs> watching Liverpool, Manchester City earlier on today. Were you Roman? No, not today. Not today. So, um, I was a, I was a bit, you know, taken over the top a little bit at that end where Doku put his foot through uh, McAllister's chest, and wow. they didn't even go to the bonder for that one. So yeah, that one kind of took me over the top a little bit. But usually I'm cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> but um, that one, that one took me over the top, and so, uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about that. Absolutely, we'll get onto that. That was like pretty much the last instant really of note in the really? game, wasn't it? Yeah. We'll, we'll um yeah we'll touch upon a few things from today's game. We'll focus on the city game, uh. But first and foremost, what I mean, just uh, your overall takeaway from the game. It's been a couple of hours since the final whistle. How are you feeling about it? Actually, believe it or not, I'm filling the hole. So I know there's a lot of Liverpool fans out there that are saying, like, I mean, a loss obviously would have would have been a lot more damaging, right? Sure. Um, but I think we take a draw in this instance. It probably we probably deserved a two one on win. To be fair, from I want to say about the 25th minute on, it was like downhill. It was all Liverpool from about yeah. the 25th minute on. They controlled a lot of the game in the first, you know, 20 to 25 minutes and, and didn't look great at first. But I don't know. The boys flipped a switch. Sabo, last like really grew into the game. I was really upset that he was he got taken off from Mo, <laughs> but it ended up working out. Harvey just, he's not, a, it, Harvey's not even a winger anymore for me. He's just, a, he's a midfielder. His best position. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. But for me, it feels good, mainly because I know that Man City and Arsenal are playing each other next, right? And yeah. I think the Manchester City, I think that if they get a result, that takes Arsenal out of the top. If they if they win that game on, uh, uh, I believe it's the 21st, I think that completely 30, takes Arsenal. 31st, I think that is. 31st, yes, yes 31st, Which, Yeah, the, the next round of Premier League fixtures, yeah. Yeah, we take a break. It's a 21-day break. That's uh, right. Well, in between league play. I think if if Manchester City beat Arsenal, that takes them out of the top. And then it puts us in a great position because we still have that advantage on Manchester City. We still got a one-point advantage. As long as we continue to do what we need to do for the rest of the season, as we've been doing, we've only lost essentially one time, fairly, to Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Tottenham, I'm not counting that game. <laughs> Forget it. We're not going to bring that in. No, that's, that's a whole nother right. <laughs> But if we can continue to perform the way that we've been performing, especially against the city side, that's been very good. Like, and we p- play like we played today, we blow most teams out of the wall, right? So Liverpool go perfect for the rest of the season. I think we win. I think we win the title. So I still feel really confident. A win would have been perfect for us. And to be fair, we should probably be about five points clear of everyone if these decisions weren't didn't you know not go the way that they probably should have the Tottenham game and then yeah. now this game right we should really be five points clear at the top but that's okay we'll take this result and we keep move, moving forward it just feels like destiny and for some reason in the media <laughs> in the media it's not being talked about they all I'm hearing is Arsenal and City Arsenal and City it's Arsenal's year it's City's year and I'm like but what about Jurgen Klopp's last season there's something about when it's when the when the situations are right, the moments are right in football, magic just almost always happens. Like the football gods just like come down, you know what I mean? I think you're right. I think we saw some of that today. Today, in right? It, yeah, I, I think exactly what you're talking about there. Where, I mean, you look at the two sets of players. I mean, Liverpool are really good. I'm not no two ways about it. Liverpool are a good side. Manchester City, they're amazing. They're awesome. They, they are. Can't, 
that we can't deny that at all. And then I think pre-game, there was maybe a bit of trepidation there. We look at the lineup, Canate out. And then on the right-hand side, we've got the, the two younger lads, Quanta, Bradley. Obviously, they've both been, every time they've played this season, they haven't let anyone down. They've both been great. Right. But then people think, well, they're both starting like, together in the same area of the pitch <laughs> against Manchester City. And then you think how, and then obviously you were talking about the first open exchanges in the game where under the cosh a little bit for those open exchanges, it was it was a bit unpleasant watching. And then things just change. You think, on oh, right. what's, what's the reason for that? Obviously, there's tactical things going on there, but there's it's undeniable there's like a little bit of magic happening as well, especially when Anfield was bouncing. It, Absolutely it just can't bouncing. be denied that there's something that you can't really fully explain. That it takes, I mean, look at Edison, for example. He loses his head and the game it changes even further. Right. He's, he's an amazing goalkeeper. Like he, His head had gone. Bernardo Silva at one point, his head had gone. Lost Kevin it. De Bruyne. Yep. Holland, is, Holland he, too. I don't know yeah. if you saw that little exchange with him and Gomez on the far side of the pitch. No, I didn't so see that. So him and, him, and, him and Gomez were getting into it in the far side of the pitch. And like they were like, they almost came to blows a little bit. And like Gomez had to like grab him. And I've, I've never seen City rattled like this. And they, you know really what I mean? were, they really were rattled. I mean, I think some of the talk, as it usually is in these games, and we, we talk about like the power of Anfield and stuff like that, and other fans can kind of, <laughs> will like lean into it a bit and kind of mock us for it. But it's, there's something there. And it's, there. it's not just, it's not just us saying it. It's time and time again, <laughs> other players, other coaches know that these certain moments in games you know, not just it's not the start of the game. It's not the general singing. Other you other know. teams have got great support and loud support and great songs and all this. But at these vital points in games, when I think the crowd at Anfield can smell blood and yeah. they get on top, of yeah. And I think <laughs> that's that's really what these coaches and players talk about when they. I mean, Pep Guardiola. He's spoken about it at length multiple Very times about about, about, yep. about what Anfield can do and. Every top coach in the game has spoken about it. And I think it's at those moments, yeah, that, as I say, when the crowd smells blood, things can get on top of opposition players, maybe like in like it does in very few other places in sports, I think. And I think we saw that today when the, the City players kind of shrunk. And obviously Trent Alexander-Arnold played this part earlier in the week. <laughs> and I think he needs to get an assist for today's uh, three points there. That he should be registered as an assist. Absolutely, because, <laughs> oh, I mean, there was a couple of, I think, uh, uh, Silver and um, uh, Howland. Yeah, yeah, Kyle Walker. A few players come mm-hmm. out and, you know, kind of defended their own club, which obviously they've got the right to do. But, they, right, but right, right. you know, when does that start turning into mind games? Not, you know, it's, so there's like all these little subplots. But, it, yeah, it was, it was fantastic to see. And I think the, the crowd were absolutely played the part and the players were just kind of grew in stature and as you say it's kind of this it's part of this un you know intangible magic that you see in yeah. sports and yeah maybe maybe it's not destined i mean sometimes like jürgen klopp's finest moments have often ended in ultimately in failure but right it's still magic for us fans so maybe it'll be that but i think as long as we're part of that ride that's what's important and f- for me personally to still be we got to the point after these all these injuries that we faced we got to the Manchester City game and now we're post the Manchester City game and right. we're still right in the title mix and I think that's yep. that's just is incredible I think when you look at the players we've had out that's that's amazing I mean that that in itself is a miracle yeah it's that it's, in un- itself it's is absolutely a unbelievable I mean what were your thoughts before you get up before the game Obviously, we've spoken then about Quanson and Bradley playing together, Canate being out. Did you feel that kind of trepidation when you saw the lineup? 100%. So my start, my predicted lineup was I thought Robbo was going to start on the left-hand side and they were going to put Gomez on the right and they were going to play the Eagle because I, I heard that that the last game, it was just more of a precautionary thing and it yeah. wasn't really uh, that much of a knock. But he didn't play at all today. And seeing those two youngsters back there, I'm just like, it's tough because sometimes you're just like, no, and then you just like, wait, 
trust in Claw. We have to trust in Claw. Hundred percent. He sees these lads every day. He he trains with these with these boys every single day. He would know more than anybody that they're ready. More than us that we see him on TV. More than us in the training cl- clips. He knows because he he's with these boys every single day. He's talking to them every day. He knows if they're ready or not. So we have to trust in them. And they stepped up. Kwanzaa was great. He only made a like I want to say maybe one or two mistakes, but then BBD was there to save him. Um, Bradley looked good on going forward, really. Like when he was just playing high and wide, he was giving Ake problems. Yeah, and I just wish really, that happened more. He's really aggressive, like as as a as a right back. He's like he likes to he's not passive at all. He likes to take the fight to his I opposition love it. wing. Yeah, he's great to watch. I love it. I love it. These boys, the academy boys, they're they're really, they're really showing how good our academy can be. Like obviously we've had Gerard, we've had Carragher, we've had you know uh, Trent now, but we just had this huge batch of just potential world class players come through our academy, and it's just I think that's a huge testament to Pep Lenders and to Jurgen Klopp. I know Pep is a, is a huge huge. Uh, a reason why a lot of these players are getting a lot of the play time. He convinces Absolutely. Klopp to 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 give them chances, and he even convinced Klopp to to put Trent in midfield. Um, so I think he gets a lot of credit for that. But bravo to those kids today. Bravo to to uh, to Callagher because he has stepped in and he looks like Allison Becker. So <laughs> yeah, he's like he, he's not just coming in and doing a job like in the the past what three, four, five games. There's even the games when he hasn't had a lot to do, there'll be one point where he has to step up. And that's like typical of Allison. Sometimes Allison can be stood around for 85 minutes. Right. And right. his concentration is so supreme. You right. know, like in the right moment, he'll step up. And we're seeing similar things with Keller. We, I know he obviously made a great save today from Phil Foden, I think it was. Um, and he almost he's... stopped that John Stones goal. He got, yeah, he yeah, got a he hand really on the unlucky. John Stalls. Really unlucky. He almost got got to it. Yeah, so, but, I mean, press- it, it, it is crazy to think that, you know, you got Alison Becker. I think he's the best goalkeeper in the world. And Me too. And you think, well, we haven't... I mean, it, it, it sounds kind of disrespectful to say, oh, yeah, we haven't really missed him. <laughs> but we haven't. We've got, like, a, a um, really, yeah. really fantastic yeah. lad who stepped in it's there. It's just crazy. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean... The with the other two lads of Quonsa and, and Bradley again, it's the same kind of thing. It's these boys have come in, and after a couple of games, obviously, when you see a new young player coming in, you're interested to see what the game is. And and now you're thinking, oh, yeah, they're just first team players now. We've got another two right full first team squad players. And you, you're not thinking, oh, it's two young boys from the academy, thinking, oh, yeah, we've got another right back now. We didn't have a right, right back at the start of the season. And no, now we magically, did. yeah, we now we magically we've got um, someone who stepped in for Trent, and it's it's unbelievable. I mean, I I, I don't know what you were doing when you were eighteen and nineteen, but I, I, I can't. Ima- do, I wasn't playing in Anfield. The best year yeah, against I, Manchester City. I can't <laughs> imagine like the the level of you know just away from like a, a, a technical sports level, just what how settled your head must be. To, right. to go out and uh, go out and play a game of football like today, which is, you know, however many million people are watching around the globe, the pressure in the game yeah. situation, the pressure in the stadium, and those boys yeah. just taking in the stride. It, I think it's 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 unbelievable, really. Like, it's, 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 as I say, it certainly wasn't what I was doing when I was 18, 19. Like, so no way. I, I talk to them boys. I mean, but you, no you pointed <laughs> earlier on, you pointed about you maybe had. Uh, Robbo starting at left back. Obviously, Joe Gomez started at left back. I thought he did really well in keeping Phil Foden quiet. Uh, how how do you, you see his game going? Were you impressed by him today? Oh yeah, if you check um, uh, Joe Gomez's left pocket, you'll actually see Phil Foden <laughs> in there. You'll see <laughs> Phil Foden I, in there. <laughs> I I hate his haircut, but I I rate Phil Foden really. High. So do I. He's, he's unbelievable. Um, I mean, I don't really know how up you are in UK culture, but he's got the most Mancunian face <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's not a compliment. <laughs> um, but he is like a supremely talented footballer and he usually does really well. 
Usually does uh-huh. really well against us, but I think yeah, Gomez was just fantastic and just keeping him quiet. It was really good. He does obviously Gomez is the right footer there, and he just doesn't allow um, Foden right. to turn Foden inside. To cut it in, right? Yeah, it's on it's, his, it's, it, he it ends was, up turning in on his strong, strong footer. So it's a good right. match. And then he fi- finishes the game at right back, and then. We've seen him play defensive midfield. We've seen him yep. play centre back. I, I, for me, he's one of the the players of the season. For me, I think he's been. He's been I so said, good. I said the same thing. I said the same thing during my stream. I was like, "Am I crazy for thinking that he could be in be Liverpool's player of the season this year?" You've na- you've nailed it, man. He's been could exceptional. He be, could he get that award? Like he's been I mean, amazing. The, the, there's a few contenders. There. I think obviously Virgil is maybe might have a word or two about that. But what a boss! His his contribution to the squad, Gomez. Is, is, as I say, you look at there's four positions he's played in, and after maybe a little slightly rocky start of the season, soon as he's got into that rhythm of playing, you know, two, three, four games in a short space yep. of time, he's just come up to speed, and he just looks so comfortable in in all those positions. In all the positions. He's, yeah, I think he's. Um, he could even be Liverpool's longest saving first team player as well. He's... I was going to mention that he's been in, he's been at the club since he was eighteen from Charlton Athletic. That's, that's where we got yeah, him from. That's right, and he was always like one of these young players who were kind of you know um, big reputation on like the youth scene and stuff like that. Yep. And he's had these bursts of um, periods at Liverpool where he's been oh he's really good, and then maybe sometimes he had the injuries and the form maybe has dropped a little yeah. bit. Yeah, like, hard to get mm-hmm. back into the side. You know. It, when Matip hit his stride, and then Canate's in, and then, and then Trent kind of re- came into the way, and then in the way that it's like, where do you get in? You know, I'd say he just seems to maybe reinvented himself a little bit, and he's it's he, much in the way third up the pitch. Harvey Elliott has been really um, versatile as well. You know, he's out, out on the wing, comes in as a I don't know, auxiliary number ten or whatever, and he's a midfield there. He'll play anywhere. He just wants to play a game of football. He's like, right. he just he's like, yeah, boss. Where do you want me? You know, he's the enthusiasm of these boys. Like, is a, a bit of a contrast as when we saw the Bruin today. You know, obviously right. he's really upset going off, and with the Liverpool team, I think the there's a real team ethos going on there. There's, we don't seem to have those kind of you know personality issues where people are. I mean, maybe it's something off. Maybe I'm blowing up the Bruins kind of thing today to something that it isn't. But I can't imagine that happening on the, this current Liverpool team. There just seems no. to be a real togetherness. Yeah. So about that, the last time we've seen a player like that for Liverpool who's blown up for getting subbed off was Sadio Mane, right? Yeah. So Sadio Mane is the, was the last guy that we've seen, and he doesn't play for the club, right? Yeah. I think that comes down to Klopp and how he runs his club and the type of players that he recruits and the type of players that he wants in there around his team. And he's very strict on that, right? He's been very open about the mentality that he looks for and players that he brings in. And if they don't have it, he doesn't want them, especially even if they're supremely talented. If they're not yeah. willing to come in and he says, you know, if you want to play striker for me and my club, you're going to have to run your balls off. You're going to have to run and run and run and run and run. And that's just what you're going to have to do. And I think that's what Darwin had to figure out when he got first got, got to the club. And that's why he Absolutely. got a rocky first season is that, no, we defend first, score second at this club, right? We press first and then score second. And I, so I think Klopp has like a, a stronger, like what you said, like ethos about the entire club that like, no, we are Liverpool. You are not Liverpool. We are Liverpool together we are the like I'm I'm sure Dom was was very upset to be taken off so early uh in that second but he gave a, a nod at the at the manager gave him a handshake and sat down versus KDB different thing you go yeah. out you find all these superstars that have had phenomenal seasons with high egos and you're just buying all these players and it's not really like a team culture right over where at Pep like obviously with, with Pep Pep says goes, but they still are these superstars with big egos versus Klopp finds these gems, unearths them. And the boys are, uh, uh, the Academy boys, they did an interview with Sky uh, this week 
And one of them was like, I owe everything to Cloud. I owe everything to this man. So I think it's just like a different mentality, the way they look at Klopp versus the way the players look at Pep. Still with a ton of respect, obviously. Yeah. Pep is a legend. He's impacted the game beyond measure. But I think they look at Klopp more so as almost like a dad. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Versus Pep is it's just the coach, the gaffer, you know, the boss. Versus Klopp is almost like a family member to, the, to a lot of our players. So more, so, more so now than ever, probably. Now right. they can see, right, we've only got a couple more months with this guy. Right. I'm right. going to run through it. I'm not going to be arguing with this guy. I want to do everything I can to make sure this fella has got a trophy at the end of the season or I can play right. as many minutes as I possibly can under right. this guy because this isn't coming around again. This is it. For these yeah. boys, I mean, we're, we feel a certain way being fans. For those guys as professional footballers, they know this is going to ha not happen in their careers again to, right. to be playing for this guy. And you can see that. You can see the effort. You can see it today, the effort that they, they put in. It was incredible. It was incredible. Probably Virgil's yeah. best game that I've seen him play in a long time. And he's been yeah. in great form recently. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of shouts for him maybe being the you know the player of the season, not just in the club, but in the league. He's, right. He's really found his form. I mean, touching on... Virgil, a little bit. There was obviously, as you said, he had a great game today, but there was one big moment <laughs> in the uh, the match today, which was exciting and intriguing. It looked like something out of a computer game when it happened and Harlan broke free. And, you know, <laughs> and we've seen Harlan break free against loads of teams. In, so last in, week he scored. bulldozing. Exactly. And today... He's one on one with Virgil Van Dyke, and this just, as I say, it seemed like something from your town there, Las Vegas, that you might <laughs> set up and have a multi-million pound contest. He seems going to come out on top, right? Uh, and maybe I think Jamie Carragher on the commentary said it was possibly a score draw. They could both walk away with the, you know, the heads held high, but I think really Van Dyke was the winner. He 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 was fine. <laughs> absolutely fine with Haaland having a shot from there and yep. he just he kind of pushed him a little bit wide didn't fly in and it's it's almost like you know he has these guys on like you know marionettes with you know puppets it's it's the I, position I mean, what did, yeah what what did you make of that little one-on-one -on -one there I thought it was intriguing I think a, a lot of defenders they make the mistake that they need to square up with their uh with their with the attacker Virg does a really good job of always turning sideways. And, and him being able to turn sideways, it almost it almost kind of stuns the attacker where they're just like, okay, do I go left or do I go right? Do I go, do I take him inside or do I take him outside? It and forces them, to, it forces them to ask the question, yeah. Yep. Instead of the, the defender making the decision for them, and, and I think Diaz, Luis Diaz plays a lot like this as well. He waits for the de defender to make a decision. Then he decides on where he's going to go. Where Verge, he waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits. And then the attacker looks up and he's like, I'm in front of goal. I got to shoot it. Like, let me just shoot it. I just got to shoot it. And then Verge is like, I got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. Boom. And then that's all he has. He doesn't even have to put a tackle in. It's all positioning. It's all positioning with Verge. And he's patient. He's very, very patient in his defense. And that's like one a big, big thing that young defenders can, can look at in Verge is that you don't have to make the tackle right away. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. And then nine times out of 10, they run out of options because that window is short. You know, you get five, six, seven seconds to really yeah. make a decision in elite football like that, right? where you make the right decision, that'll end up leading to a goal. And nine times out of 10, that window passes you by. And then Verge looks world class just because he was more patient than the other defenders were, right? So that's the big thing with Verge. <laughs> I love him. I love him. He's, reinvent he's reinvented defending for me. And I say this all the time. I don't know if you agree with me. I think he's probably the greatest center back that we've seen in the Premier League era. I know JT was up there. Vidic was up there. Ferdinand is up there. But to do what, what Verge has been able to do, especially lately with this young team and score big goals, 
not get beaten in the air for probably, I want to say maybe it's like six games now. I don't think that's that's ever been done by a center back before, right? So no, I'm, he's an I'm unbelievable. Unsurprisingly, I'm I'm also quite biased on who I might think <laughs> might be the best defender out of that that list that you just came out. I I mean, they're obviously great defenders as well, and there's being fantastic centre backs in the league. But I think the way Virgil Van Dijk plays the game, it it's different. It's something different than what we see with these other guys and. Right. You know, having a pay, we've all got opinions, and if you think those other players are the best, and that's that's fair enough. But I think what's undeniable is that he's just the way he moves looks completely different than most footballers. Full stop. There's like just, I mean, it's kind of grace, but it's also I don't know. It seems like he's playing the game in his head a little bit. I mean, what I think is is a good kind of relation with. Van Dyke and Alexis McAllister is that they both seem to be playing the game at, on their own clock. Right. Every, every other player on the pitch is playing their game. Van Dyke and McAllister seem to be playing their own individual sports. They're like, uh, don't worry about you guys do whatever 100%. you need to do. We, we'll we'll do what we need to do and then we'll see who's the winner at the end of the game. And they those... Those two fellas are just, it's, they've got such unbelievable composure. And they're, again, it's it, such mental strength and just the, the way they both play the game. And it is, it's just incredible. Like from a, a time point of view, a composure point of view. And I think we saw that again today from McAllister. We saw him last week, his composure against Forrest to, to you know, take a breath, take a look unbelievable moment and then today he just ran that midfield him and Virgil you know, the plays of the match for me and I mean what about taking that penalty he took about pressure he just didn't really look like he was he looked like he was having a kick about on, a, on the park on a Sunday afternoon Yo, you a fan? I love I love Alexis McAllister He's a beast. I love Alexis McAllister now that Indo is back, and that's a huge, huge, huge piece right there, right? So he's not playing that at six role, which he yep. played well, right? He did end up playing well. There was a he few did, little yeah. spots where that was, he was like, ah, that obviously isn't his, his best position. But he's so smart. Like what you mentioned, he's so intelligent, and he understands the game and positioning and opposition positioning, where his body needs to be. I say this all the time. It's almost like Tiago, but with just less flair. Yeah. less swaying of the hips and stuff like that and less flashiness with the way that he's so intelligent on how he needs to strike the ball, where he needs to be, where he needs to lay the ball off, the accuracy, all of that stuff. Jurgen calls him the football doctor for a reason. I 100% believe him <laughs> on that one. He is the football doctor. Um, I don't know if you, you're familiar with Craig already and the agenda, but um, he mentioned that McAllister could be a Luka Modric for us, right? Yeah. And I 100% agree. I'm like, that game is very similar. They're very similar where they they play in their own timing. They can score streamers. They can defend. They can, they can send balls across the field. They can do little layoffs. They can do everything that you'd want a midfielder to do, but they're this big. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the perfect package and there's so low center of gravity hard to knock off the ball but he dominated that midfield and i think that was in part of why kdb was so frustrated it's because yes. he could get nothing off of mcallister and it's just like i'm the, the hundred million dollar player this guy's yeah. worth 25 million like i was he bossing me like this like this is crazy so i'm the i he's mcallister will be a huge reason why we went the um, that purchase is, I think, another turning point. You know how like DVD and Allison was a big turning point for us. Absolutely, I think this McAllister uh, uh, transfer could be another one for us, where it was just like, ah, they got McAllister that season, and they went on this run and won this trophy and this trophy and this trophy. So I rate him very highly. One of the best player, one of the best midfielders in the world. And right now, I'm not sure there's very many that are. Is is in like absolutely scorching form, I think. Yeah. And I, I'm the same as you. I just love watching him. I think he's is so economical. He, you never see him do something which is 
unnecessary at all. He just right, does the right. the right thing in the right moment, and he usually does it. You know, it's usually like the the technique is usually spot on. Is is so good. It's such a. It's interesting. Obviously, this was meant to be the transitional year for Liverpool's midfield. All these new, <laughs> Slavoslav, McAllister, all these players coming in. Let's let's just see how it goes. And now, what we you know we're in a, a title race, which will is going to be you know probably going into April. I think our, our yep. next games were at the end of this month. Interestingly enough, when we do play Brighton in the next game, and then City and Arsenal play each other on the same day, we play first. I think we're at two o'clock UK time, and then Arsenal and City are later on. So it's. Now That'll be it, good for us. Yeah, and as you're entering, well, it's good if we win. I think it's uh, if we win. <laughs> yeah, as you're entering this kind of, you know, the back end of the season, I think these kickoff times are always intriguing. There's who's who's going first, who's going to blink first, and that yeah. that's going to be a, a really interesting day. And it's thankfully it's long enough away that we might have more of a squad to pick from. So I think maybe right. we're looking at um, Curtis Jones might be Trent coming back. back. Curtis Trent Jones, back. yes. Yeah. I mean, I love Curtis Jones. I love all those players. Me there, too. But it's it's um, as, as kind of hamstrung as we've been or possibly been at times, potentially being with these injuries. Hopefully the, the upside is that we do enter this title race in the back end with fresh legs coming in, fresh players right. coming in. So, I mean, you look at the the kind of kilometers that Harvey Jones must have, uh, Harvey Elliott must have run today. If he can uh, sit out in the back end for a game or two, Curtis Jones comes in. Obviously, we've got uh, Mo Salah, Salah, all these players coming in. It's, I don't know, I think it, there's a, a real positive story that we can maybe get at the end of the season. And uh, I mean, even if we don't win anything, I just love, I just love us being involved and I love the, the fun that you can have on a day like today, even though it's horrible to watch right. at the end of it, when you don't get beat and you can have a, a smile on your face and think, wow, we're still in it for another few weeks. Let's see what happens. Uh, I mean, for me personally, that's enough for me. I just enjoy that ride of seeing right. where it's taken us on what's going to be Jürgen Klopp's final season and what was possibly today, Jürgen Klopp and Pep's final Meeting today, final maybe, time maybe, that they meet. Yeah, maybe the, maybe the FA Cup possibly yeah. there, but it'd be. A, it, I think that's a bit of an end of an era. You could see obviously the mutual respect with those two guys today. I think it's right. nice. I think it's 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 like a rivalry which doesn't have that kind of needle. It doesn't have that you know that kind of Benitez Marino or Wenger Ferguson. Right. It doesn't have the aggression. They right. just seem to really, really respect each other and acknowledge. That the other one is elevating their own game. I think it's been great to see you a Pep fan. Um, yeah, I, I I actually really like the way that he coaches teams. Um, I like that he's constantly reinventing himself um, through different iterations of this Manchester City team, even back in his buyer days, and even back to the Barcelona days. Because like you look at a Pep team during the Barcelona days, that whole tick attack era where it's just like never give up the ball, right? Versus now in this Manchester City team, he's almost taken some influence from Jurgen Klopp with the uh oh, with the pressing. Yeah, yeah. Right? He with the pressing and, you know, the use of wide players and things like that. Like he didn't really do that before. A lot of the things were like really tight. Like his wide players would cut in at Barcelona, right? Then Messi would drop deep and then the the wingers would or the uh, the wide players will come around the uh, the sides, right? Versus now, it's more of a high press type of situation. They don't have to have the ball all the time, right? Like how at Barcelona, where it's just like no questions asked, don't lose the ball. Yeah. So him being able to evolve as time continues to go on and continue to win and continue to get results, you you have to tip your hat off to him. Whether you you know you love Man City or you hate Man City, you have to say the well coached. He uses his resources that he gets well. And you haven't seen this type of dominance like this since really Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah. In terms of a manager. So Yeah, it's kind of galling to say, but it's it's all true. And I, I don't particularly like Man City. I don't really have that much feeling either way against Man City, in all honesty. But um I think I think he's a genius. I think he's been amazing for the game. He certainly pushed Klopp on to different levels. Uh and when Pep 
retires or moves on, I'll be happy because I don't think, you... <laughs> even though I'm sure talented coaches will come in there, but I don't think we'll see someone who can maybe, as you say, dominate things as much. You know, obviously he's got the resources there, but he's still, I think he's still a genius in how he organizes it. So 100%. I, I hope Jürgen takes him with him and they, yeah. they go on, go on holiday and have a happy know. life together. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about Pep. Pep was like, they were asking him, like, are you going to retire soon? And he's like, no, nah, no time soon for me. I think he wants to win more Champions Leagues with Man City. I think if he wins, like, maybe one or two more Champions Leagues with Man City, they'll think about it. Yeah. Um, But maybe he'll come back to Barcelona and say, who knows? Maybe. I mean, Get one thing's for the sure. Is all I'm saying. And, one thing's for sure. He's not going to be winning another five Champions Leagues. So I think nah, Man, I City, think so. Man City aren't catching Liverpool up anytime soon. But I think that's uh-uh. a good place, good place to leave it. Um, we've covered that Man City game. Obviously, we've got the Europa League. What is hopefully, you know, a, a, not quite a dead rubber, but hopefully Liverpool's youngsters can guide Liverpool into the next round right. there. And then we're at Old Trafford next Sunday for that's FA Cup show. One. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean... Set up in zero. <laughs> it's it's always it's always a horrible place to go well it's not always a horrible place to go but I always have trepidation <laughs> like when I was growing up watching Liverpool in the 80s United always seemed to even though Liverpool the dominant team United always seemed to get the results against us so I've always got that horrible feeling in the gut you know a few minutes before kick off but yeah. hopefully Liverpool can get through and we'll still be within a shout of Four trophies come this time next Sunday. We could, we could. Uh, We're confidence. in their Europa League. Le- yeah. I mean, Leverkusen don't. No, Leverkusen really is the only team I'm worried about in Europa League. They I'm trying not to. Look... Th- I'm not. I'm trying right. not to think about that. Really, I'm hoping. I'm <laughs> really the... hoping it doesn't come to a Liverpool Leverkusen. No, I hope it, 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 I hope league. not. I hope <laughs> not. And then the FA Cup. You never know. We get past Man United. We never know. We're back in another semi, right? And then we just got one more. After that, we could be back in another final. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's closer than we think. Closer than we think. We just have to keep believing. And I, uh, we could be on for a quad, baby. <laughs> I believe. I believe. Well, thanks for joining me today. Do you want to tell listeners and viewers about your own channel? Give yourself a little Yeah, plug, absolutely. Which I heartily uh, you guys... recommend. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mark. You're the man. Uh, uh, and I've been telling all my my subscribers about your channel been telling him that that this episode is going to be coming out to check you get check you out Good luck. but um my name is roman i am with unconformed fc on youtube unconformed cf on tiktok and i do pre-match post-match liverpool reviews mainly um sometimes i'll do you know one-off little documentaries and stuff like that but come out i do live streams on all the big matches uh, like this one, Manchester City versus Liverpool. We're doing one for Manchester United as well next Sunday. So come hang out. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Red Press first and foremost, if you are not. <laughs> um, but let's uh, let's raise up this whole Red Army and the whole community. So I appreciate you, Mark, for having me on. Seriously, uh, big, big thank you. And I'll be back anytime you'll have. Excellent, mate. It was a pleasure. As I say, you're... A, always a calm and influence watching your post match videos. So <laughs> it's a glad to, you know, I, as the blood pressure raised up today, it was nice to hear your <laughs> calm and Everybody calm down. Everybody. Yeah. This last one, this last one that I reported made me a little bit fiery. Though. Oh, really? I'm going to, I'll check that. I'll check that out later. I hope, I hope the language is clean. But yeah, I appreciate it, mate. And we'll speak soon. You take care, mate. And up the reds. See you later. Up the reds, Mark. You have a good one.